Bhattara. But so Bhattara is also part of uh, uh, the of the martial island. So it's, all, all those animals might have different governments. But basically, the traditions are the same. Their diet is stuff that they raise there and catch there and, and all of that, yeah? Uh, in Majuro, it's a lot, lot of the, the food comes from, from the states. Uh, <clears throat> when you get out to Ujjayi, Ubai, uh, Piglet, the uh, enemy talk, Zule, uh, Mili, and all those places, a lot of them is traditional, but it's still supplemented by cat food. Like I was saying, as you get closer to the diet, you see more of the traditional things are happening. I'm just wondering about the, um, the health of the people here, you know, like that. So, um, you know, it's, it's funny. Although you might see how they live, but on the islands, you don't see anyone with alcohol. You don't see any health problems. Um, from all the other islands that we came from, you go through areas where there's homeless people. There's people who don't have, people who are living on the side of the roads. And we, we think of modern society as being civilized. Well, I can tell you, yeah. my, these people are a lot better off the way they are. They're being civilized. On their islands, they take care of all the people. There's no one saying that, oh, you have more money than another person. Oh, they the same. So it, it really sets you back to look at their own values and things. And uh, kind of like what I was talking about earlier, about how Mao came outside of his, you know, his culture to, to share with us. Yeah. On one hand, you know, we we're very thankful for what he did. And on the same hand, when you sit with some of the chiefs there, and in a very nice way, we're kind of scolding, you know, for what Mao had done as he went out. You know, but in in a way, you kind of step back and think about it, and you look at them and how much of their culture they still have. And how well the people are still well off. And then it makes you not, it's not get mad, this is, you just respect them for what they're doing. Because still in this day and age, their people are still well taken care of and their culture is still alive. Right. So, who are we to judge their ideals and their values? And what is holy, I mean, for what that did for us, we can never ever repay him for this now. Now, we did take him a freezer that, that he wanted because we asked him what you know what he want. And in that way the freezer was to help freeze the fish for the island when they get their typhoons. Um, took a whole uh, solar panel set up on there for so you don't have to ride on a generator. Because the only gas that they get comes once a month if the ship comes. You know, once their gas, they run our gas, the boats that you see in there, those engines, everything, you know, they're well taken care of because that's all they want. Once that's out, they can't run anything. How did Mao ever find out that someone in Hawaii was interested? How did somebody in Hawaii find out? <laughs> well, actually, in 1974, the uh, organization started called the Polynesian Voyaging Society, and they were looking to build a traditional voyaging canoe, all in, in the same metrics as all our, our ancient voyaging canoes. <clears throat> when that was built, they were looking for somebody to do that had the knowledge of uh, doing non, non instrument navigation. So, throughout the search, search in Hawaii, and also through Polynesia, they couldn't find anybody um, that still had the knowledge, the intact knowledge to do this voyage. Um, fortunately for for Hawaii and, and I guess all Polynesia, um, Mao, Mao's uh, niece's husband was in Hawaii. He, uh, he works for the U.S. Fisheries, or he was at that time. Uh, <laughs>